Good morning. Today we are in Willow Creek. It's the self-proclaimed Bigfoot capital of the world. Well, we were plenty tired from our ride last night, so we slept really well. And this morning Steve has some conference calls, so we zipped into town. There's this great park here, and uh, we saw one of the locals playing with his dog off leash, and uh, one of the city workers came to empty the garbage cans, and they chatted. He didn't seem to mind, so it seems like they're pretty chill as long as your dog is, uh, is well behaved and under your voice control. I think you can, you can get away with quite a bit sometimes, so it's pretty remote. We're the only ones out in this park today, and this is a pretty remote town, but it's really, really beautiful here. I'm gonna drive, Steve's gotta keep working, and we're gonna just head in the direction of Redding and see what happens. My body's slowly recovering from Northern California. I've got some traces of poison oak healing from Santa Cruz. I just barely got a little bit. I washed up real well and stuff, but I still got a little bit. And then after the ticks yesterday, it's taken a little bit of a toll, but no target. Uh, looking marks on me or Fender, so hopefully that means we don't have Lyme's disease from the ticks. It's sure great to be out here, though. I'm loving to see all the green. It's kind of interesting in little towns like this. They kind of don't wake up until Memorial Day, and they kind of go to sleep at Labor Day. At least in California, we found that a lot of BLM campgrounds and national forests and stuff. We had some great national forest and BLM spots picked out last night that we were driving to to stay at, and they had the gates shut. They were still closed for the season, even though there's no snow up here. So that's something we're learning is some places, like even though it's public land and it's free camping and it's open trails and stuff, there are gates that close it off from time to time. And Google has offered us zero help in this town. We can't yeah. find campgrounds. We couldn't. We even looked for a public park. Google didn't help us, so we just drove around until we found one. So it's it's one thing to learn about van life, watching others, and to imagine how it would be, and it's another thing to actually do it. When you actually get out here, like when you're at home before you do this, you think, oh, it'll be so easy. I'll just Google parks and look up the Wi-Fi maps and find where I can plug stuff in and then you actually get out here and it's either inaccurate information or it's not in Google and you have to learn a different way. It's still fun but it's easy for people who've never done it to think they know how it can be done but once you actually do it it's an entirely different ball of wax. We didn't even know this river existed before today but we are gonna have to research it with friends and raft it. That looks like a great pack rafting spot. Look at that. It's cool seeing some little shallows that you could wade around in. There's really not much of that on the Green River, which was our last big water trip. That's really cool. We'll have to do some research and come back with friends. Teresa and I love exploring and finding little spots like this, but we love doing it with a group of people even more. So if you are into adventure and you like paddling or kayaking or mountain biking or hiking, check out our meetup section. That's why we've got it, so that we can connect with you and we can go on adventures together and make lots of cool memories. I can just imagine floating this with five or six people, camping along the way, turning a three or four day trip into it. That'd be really fun, but we can't do it just by ourselves. This sign makes it sound like it's really, really bad rapids going forward. 85% of all boating fatalities could have been prevented by wearing life jackets. That is a big number. All right, we're gonna do some research, see how heavy the flow is and how bad the rapids are down there. Everything out here is either named Bigfoot Rafting Company or Bigfoot Inn. Who knew Bigfoot can help you build your house, carry things in a wheelbarrow and garden? It's been fun seeing the Trinity River from up here. It's been a really rainy year this year in California. They've had a ton of rock slides. Here on 299 is one of them. They got traffic closed in one direction and uh, we have to take turns getting through here. Look at that. Took out the road and covered it. 
That looks fun. We stopped at a beautiful park where we're having lunch and we're going to be washing the bikes and getting all that mud off of them that was on them from yesterday's ride. What a great day to be outside. A little bit warm and I need some shade here, but it's nice. This is how heathens wash their bike when they don't have a water spigot. Very fancy. Well, we're in Redding, California now. It's like 20 degrees hotter than where we were before. It is warm here, so I've got to get that fantastic fan wired in the next hour or two because I am burning up. We're going to go shopping while we're in a town that has some nice shops here. We've been in tiny little towns up till now, and we have been able to find some certain stores that we really need. One thing that's really cool about traveling by van and not having the Airstream is when we pass through a cool little town, we can just stop and enjoy it. When you're towing a 30-foot Airstream, you can't do that. You need a place to put it and a place to park, and you have to get out, and it can be a real hassle. And even just little things like deciding where you're going to stay, you're way more limited when you've got that giant Airstream. So we have a lot more flexibility this way. We're able to stop places. We're able to check stuff out more. We're able to kind of wing it a little more. Actually, a lot more. The Airstream really ties us down. But it's also a house and an office, and it's a great way to get our lifestyle done. So I'm so glad we have the option to do both, but I didn't realize how much the Airstream was tying us down until we did this, where we can say, do we want to go to Oregon tomorrow, or do we want to go to Tahoe, or do we want to stay here? Like, we have so many options. We don't need to find a place to put it. Anyway, pros and cons, but that's pretty cool. We actually had really great success with the clothes shopping we did for Steve. We went to Sports LTD here in Reading, and they were awesome. They treated us super well, and they were dog friendly, so Fender could come in with us, which was great because it was such a hot day. I think it's going to pretty much be it for the night. We're going to head out of town, find a place to camp.